Welcome to What the Hell. Uh, today we're going to actually talk about, we're going to, uh, just a little information, we're going to do a charity event come uh, November 6th to the 7th, mostly the 6th. Uh, hopefully we have some good guests on. Uh, it will be down in Dallas for the uh, Veterans of Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation uh, Iraqi Freedom. So, hopefully you can see us out. Well, see me out there. Johnny's going to be occupied. I'm going to be in Boston. I'm going to be in Boston. Or making my way back from Boston. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to we're gonna talk about Facebook uh, screwing the pooch. Well, Instagram, Facebook, it's the same company. But a lot of people are saying it's because of a whistleblower and other people saying it's hackers. But it is kind of convenient that the whistleblower said the same thing, uh, said something. And what's really fun about the whistleblower is the fact that the reason why she was working at Facebook was she was trying to be a Trojan horse so Donald Trump doesn't get reelected. That was her whole thing. But politically aside, she did find some it, – it, it's it sounds like a, a Snowden-type deal. Yeah, it – to where she found out uh, a lot of stuff like with bullying and uh, that wasn't stopped. And they're <clears throat> taking over safety towards uh, bullying and everything. They don't really care. I mean, m most analytics, uh, if you look at, they have uh, the point to where if people are arguing, people are going to it. Yeah. Or it's that whole, uh, if it bleeds, it leads type deal. Which, I don't know. Do we post a lot of memes that, like, uh, are, like, hate? What's really funny is is the, the most mundane and stupid, ridiculous memes are the ones that, like, the, our best one so far was the uh, toilet paper. Yeah. I, I love the uh, the Let's Go Brandon memes that are going around now. Now, where that one, you know, where, where the Let's Go Brandon thing originates, there was a uh, Xfinity NASCAR race at Talladega. And somebody who had never won a race before uh, ends up winning. Uh, a, uh, I want to say it was a short race. It was. It was like it ended. They're even making costume. shirts with those. Uh, with yeah. Him well, on the, there. the guy's name is Brandon Brown, right? Yeah. And it's funny because you could hear people in the crowd chanting on TV, "Fuck Joe Biden." Yeah. Right? Well, the ESPN reporter was saying, "Oh, you can hear the crowds chanting, let 'Let's go, Brandon.'" That's where that came from. Oh, okay. Yeah. And even Ted Cruz got on board with a tweet, right? And it was, like, it was like, hashtag, let's go, Brandon. And it was like he posted an article or a link to something about Joe Biden. And he was like, hashtag, let's go, Brandon. And I was like, that is fucking epic. You know, I mean, and I think Brandon Brown, the actual driver, he, he, he even got on board with the whole thing. And he was just like, you know, I think it, this is kind of funny kind of a deal. And, but, you know, he's not going to say a whole lot. He's not going to get too involved with it because, obviously, he's got sponsors to answer to. And, and, and his career, for the most part, is just not necessarily not going to go anywhere. But it, it he still has responsibilities to his sponsors. And if he starts speaking out against the, you know, if he starts voicing an opinion that differs from what his sponsors have, then they'll drop him and his career is not going to go anywhere because... Yeah. Then his team's not going to be able to afford to field his car. Yeah, that's the only that's the only bad thing about having sponsors. Even if if we had gotten sponsors or something like that, and we said something horrible to the point where we would lose our sponsors, we're like, oh, okay. I know there's a a lot of uh, people that don't care about that because they're raking in the money anyways. Yeah. So, uh, but I I think it's kind of funny that. She ended up going on TV, and she's saying, it was like, oh, bullying's happening in this, and that, and this is happening now. And at the same time, you have that one meme that got a uh, flag is uh, unsafe to look at. The one with the uh, daisy line? Yeah. 
that was I, I I tried to uh see if I can get it to where it's fixed or anything. No, it's locked in to where you, you it has to be uh you have to click on it, it's unsafe. And all it says is if you want to stand for something, uh if you have to stand alone. And yeah. it just has and it, and uh, it blocks it out. Like it's it's always sensitive content. Zuckerberg <laughs> has lost his damn mind. Oh, I, I, I I keep on saying this is the fact that uh, it's not Zuckerberg because he, he he's so high not not high up but the the fact that he's so oblivious it, it, once you get a company that's so big you get uh you you don't yeah, know what ultimately happens the buck company. has to stop somewhere yeah somebody's calling the shots yeah and if Zuckerberg is so far removed from what the day-to-day operations or the 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 day-to-day policies of his own company have then he just needs to publicly come out and say i'm no longer associated with facebook i've taken my money i was pushed out by the board something he needs to distance himself now the person the person that does twitter on the other hand is totally opposite Oh yeah, and he he gets on there all the time. It's like, oh, I I I do this, I do this. I I, I want to be on the spotlight. Yeah, which is ridiculous. And I also like the that one meme is a uh, uh, new girlfriend found uh, phone unlocked it, so I had to take down Facebook and Instagram. Mark Zuckerberg. Right. Yeah, <laughs> we had talked about that during our um, sports episode, and. Um, you know it. Uh, you know it, it was. It was. It was exactly that. The meme was. You know, here's the real reason why, and it's because he left his phone out somewhere, and he didn't want his girlfriend picking up his phone and going through his Facebook Messenger. So he just took the whole damn thing down for a few hours. And uh, it was like it was like when Snapchat went down for uh, like like six hours or something like that about a month or so ago. Yeah. You started seeing all these females come up, and they're like. You know, I love how it was immediately, immediately it was all these guys having to be loyal to their women for, you know, while Snapchat was down. It was like, well, you know, that shit goes both ways. Yeah. Right? You know, so for at least six hours during the day, that day when Snapchat went down, men and women both had to be faithful. You know, and I'm like, it's just like, come on, man, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't paint that one-sided brush. Well, they always want to paint it uh, in that kind of uh, thing. I mean, even with uh, Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. Right. And you're looking at to the point where uh, you're basically getting rid of one a, a social media outlet that boasts. Uh, sponsorships yeah and data and everything <coughs> but you're also looking at the fact of hey you had a couple of hours to where you were i, 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 I want to see how many people just lost their minds oh yeah I, I, it would be freaking awesome just to see a person who's like i can't get a facebook i can't i can't i can't uh cyber stock my girlfriend that that i have and everything it probably saved a couple of people's lives too yeah, actually, I think it might have, you know, but it, it just. Now, what was the messenger down too, or? or yeah, I think all? messenger was down too. Messenger, Facebook, Instagram. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't know if messenger ever went down or not. But, um, you know, but it it just. Yeah, because what apps uh, went down too? Yeah, okay. well, uh, WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah, because it's connected. Uh, but no, it, it's it. It also is another thing that we got a little bit of insight of how a day to day goes on in Facebook, because they're just letting bullying happen, and they 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 said that it was like, oh, we're stopping bullying and everything like that, and to a degree, yeah, because I I I wrote some stuff one time, uh, and this wasn't even bullying is like hey this person's being a bitch i understand and it was, it was like i understand this person uh, person's being a bitch but you got to take these steps to better yourself yeah and it got flagged for me using this person's a bitch 
you get it just I was like I had to reword it. You get, I had to use some uh, word ninja to do on that one. It was really weird. Yeah. How yeah. some of the stuff ends up uh, being blocked, but it's also kind of funny that once you realize what's uh, what's the going ons of that stuff, and you're like. Okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. It's like uh, you're pulling the uh, covers off of the Wizard and Wizard of Oz. It's like, aha! Oh, it's just you. Right, exactly. And, you know, you just kind of, you want to sit there and be like, mm, yeah, no, okay. Um, but. And they even had a congressional the hearing. Yeah, the, too. the whistle, you know, and that's the, that's the funny part because it's like. Here you're a whistleblower. Now, 36 hours later, we want you to come up to Washington, to Capitol Hill, to testify in front of a congressional panel. Well, why is Which, that? Which, half the time, those congressional hearings don't do anything. They're a waste of time and money. Yeah. And, you know, it's... I mean, the only time frame that it actually helped out was the, uh, was it church trial or investigation or some shit like that with the CIA? something like that but you know now I do love watching those congressional panels where you know conservative you know panel members roast whoever it is that's sitting behind the, the microphone oh yeah our like senator, General Miley uh, our senator Rob uh, uh, what Rob Jackson Johnson god dang it I forget his name uh da, 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 da. Uh, Ronnie Jackson. Yeah, Ronnie Jackson, yeah. He's a prior admiral. And uh what well, well, I'd still want to get his uh pick his brain on reason why he wasn't on the uh uh, veteran, because he was supposed to be uh, the VA uh, d- Department of VA's uh, lead, and uh, something happened. They were saying that he was like an alcoholic and pill popper or something like that. And yeah, uh, yeah. But it was one of those time frames to where it was Trump error, and they were trying to not let anybody be in those uh, positions. Yeah, I mean, they, they'll find anything and everything that they can to basically. And I really hate to tell everybody, though. Uh, they're probably just like, that's because of Trump. I was like, no, they've done this throughout the years. It's just now it's vocalized and shown big time. Very much so. <clears throat> yeah. The good, th- uh, good thing about uh uh, information being shoved in your face half the time, you actually find stuff that actually is ridiculous to the point to where, oh, I didn't know that was happening. Oh, I didn't know that was, this is happening. And you actually find out how stupid some of the districts are because they vote in people that are really, I think, uh, mentally challenged. <laughs> Looking at you, AOC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm also talking about the uh uh congresswoman of uh Houston that oh, Sheila said, Jackson Lee. Yeah. Who said that uh an article fifth uh, uh AR fifteen weighs as much as his ten boxes. E- 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 yeah. E- and it had and it's a fifty caliber round. Mm-hmm. Which there are there is an AR fifty. Yeah, but I mean it's it's a custom upper. Yeah. And it's and it's not And it's a custom lower. Yeah. And it's well, bolt no. action. Actually. Yes and no. Um there's a company that sells a um AR uppers that are chambered in fifty BMG. You know how much it costs and it's ridiculous? Nine hundred dollars. Yeah, no tax stamp. I know. And but with parents they do, don't have tax stamps either. Right. But what they do with those uppers is they give you uh stronger uh, retention bolt or the the takedown and pivot bolt or a pin 
a new, uh, a stronger buffer spring and a stronger buffer. So that way you don't put stress fractures in the AR-15 lower. Now how it works is that the magazine obviously is not going to fit up through that, right? So it goes sideways. It's, yeah. it's a 45 on the left-hand side. So it, it chambers that I still that wouldn't use that because I know. No, they, they uh, down their demolition ranch, Yeah, they, they stress fired everything. Because it comes in three different lengths. It comes in a 16-inch barrel, an 18-inch barrel, and a 24-inch barrel. Right, and then they've got, well, it's an 18, 24, and there's like a 36 or well, something. I'm not, like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the uh, the, the pushback because... The no, that's why they, they got the stronger buffer spring. Mm. Still, the Barrett had, the the barrel for the Barrett actually moves back with the oh, yeah. gun and everything, yeah. so you don't have that much pushback. Well, you still have put a lot of pushback on it. But with, with that custom upper that this company offered or offers, I'm not sure if they still do or not, um, Demolition Ranch absolutely loved it. I mean, they gave it great reviews. I remember it because I was like, oh, yeah, I want one of those. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> stupid uh, cheap, too. Ah, fuck it. Anyways, but <laughs> it's it just shows to... It, the I'm, I'm still wondering why she didn't say anything about the uh, sex trafficking and stuff like that. Because there's still a lot of uh, sex trafficking going on on Instagram and uh, Facebook that they're just sk skilling underneath the rug. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's dude, it's ridiculous. It really is. Um, Even though we use it to, for our uh podcast and everything it's it's one of those sometimes you got to use the double that you have right there yeah but the thing of it is is that it's like um i just what i don't what i don't get is that okay so when i when i read the article about the whistleblower or whistleblower mm -hmm. It just obviously had that like whole left wing operative feel to it. Well, yeah, because she was technically. I mean, she came out and she was like, "Oh well, the Capitol Hill rioters or insurrectionists." I I love the fact that they now put dissent, public dissent, against the uh, sitting administration. We're always we're gonna we're automatically labeled as insurrectionists. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, even though it's our constitutional right and responsibility to hold the government to an account, they now call us insurrectionists. That's that's awesome. But um, well, that's that's the thing that a lot of people only because it's shown out right now. Eighty percent of the people are actually just moderate. But you always have those people that are screaming at your ear that are from the left or the right it's not just you know <clears throat> it's not just the left side it's not just the right side it's both sides that have this but you have like this gap in people that go off on just what they're being fed and half the time they don't really care right as long as they can still get a paycheck exactly i mean I don't know. It I I have I've found myself here recently just kind of like trying to stay as far away from a lot of the political crap as much as I can because one I'm aware of the fact that you know I'm, I'm I'm tied to our our Facebook page. Yeah. And you know, I'm tied to our YouTube channel. I mean, basically all of our social media platforms you know, I'm tied to it just like you're tied to it. Yeah. That's the reason why I don't put a lot. I mean, I, I found some good ones. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I try to stay away from it. I, I, I try to, for uh, among other reasons, I try to stay away from that crap because it's just like, it just consistently puts me in a bad mood. Like when Obama was in office, I used to listen to talk radio all the time when I was working during the day. And dude, it would just piss me off. It would put me in a bad mood. And... 
once I decided to, you know, it's like, I, I don't want to listen to this crap today. I just want to listen to some music, you know. It's like, it generally just kind of became in a, you know, a better mood. And, you know, because, I mean, we, we've got, you know, every, like, we're always talking about, like, you know, if, if, if you've got a problem with what I'm saying, walk away. Well, it's not that I had a problem with what I was hearing. It's just the fact that it was just putting what is going on with the government, putting on, putting what what's wrong with society, what's going on in society out there, up in my face, you know, for eight, nine, ten hours a day, and me not being able to do anything about it. You know, just kind of give you that sense of hopelessness, helplessness, and just overall disparagement and gloom and doom. And I'm like, I, you know... I like hearing the positive stories about patriots. I like hearing a positive story about our, our men and women overseas, our war fighters, doing the things that go above and beyond the Call of Duty kind of stuff. Um, and because that gives me hope. That restores my faith in humanity. That, that, that gives me reason to say, you know what, there are people in this world that are worth fighting for. Yeah. You know? You know, outside of our normal, you know, small circle of friends and family. Well, that's not, even with the, uh, uh, like I said about the, uh, oh God, I can't even remember the battle of uh, Scenaria or, mm -hmm. Skinner, well, or whatever it is. I mean, 25 people going out against like 14,000 and they just kept on going. Yeah. I mean, that brings up a lot, but. I don't know where she's going to be. I mean, she can't... Because she used to work for Google. Now she works for uh, her own company. And it it just seems that she wants to uh, do the right thing on this. It's the reason why she blew the whistle on it and everything. But she's going off of, like, uh, teen mental health... Uh, and they're not doing anything to uh, help out, you know, that kind of avenue. Which, yeah. I mean, we we grew up through uh, Xbox Live, and that you know, the was the Modern Warfare Two uh, lobbies. Yeah, that was that was so toxic. I mean, you, I, I'm I'm surprised we didn't have anything, you know, people going up. It's like my kid killed himself because of this, this, this. It was it was Xbox Live. It, 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 someone told them to, you know, do it. Blah blah blah. I'm, I'm surprised we didn't have anything back back in the day with that. Well, and I think a majority of that was the fact that parents parented back then. Not to say that there's not parents that do their jobs now, but back then, that was only like eight eight to. I know, but you think about how vastly. Uh, you know how how wide of a shift that this country has taken in the last eight years. I mean, as soon as Trump took office, you had every swinging Dick, Tom, and Harry out there that was a snowflake. Had, I mean, as soon as he was sworn in, the mental instability of the youth of this country became a glaringly hard thing to ignore, because. On an inauguration day, whenever you you hear you see uh, video footage of, of people openly screaming at the sky, yeah, you know I'm like, come <coughs> on, man, or or the well, like what kind of what you know what circumstances does a person have to be exposed to to? And she became a really big meme. Oh yeah, you know. Or the glasses with the beanie hat and the, with the the high the, the the reflective yellow jacket, right? Or, or that one uh, chick that did a TikTok video of when uh, Ruth Beta Ginsburg died. Yeah, I mean, she's like, couldn't you hold on a little bit longer until you know Trump was out of office and everything? What were you thinking? I'm like, well, <laughs> her well, body was thinking. I think it's about time. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm kind of done, you know, but. Yeah, I just, I don't know, man. It, the dumbing down of our American kids, the destruction of the family unit, and the enabling.
enablement of this womb to tomb, cradle to grave government dependency mentality is going to be the ultimate downfall. And they're hiding everything behind this guise of political correctness. Um, I mean, they slap the term phobia on anything and everything that re is remotely polarizing. And if they don't like what you are talking about, then you're, you're, you're labeled as a bigot. You're labeled or as racist, a sexist or, or you know, a yeah. Nazi. Yeah. E even if you like, uh, I don't really think that's how it is. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, 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 it's well, then educate me. Bring up some valid, honest points. It's kind of cookie cutter right here. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to admit if my viewpoint is wrong or my if my opinion is wrong, but you have to come at me with some facts. With facts. And I'm not talking about talking points. Well, it's like the... It's I'm talking like, about actual facts. Well, it's like that whole photo with the uh, 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 cowboy on the border and everything like that and yeah he released the reins to grab the guy yeah and do his job and they jumped uh, all over that and then and then and, the and next day one of our co-workers was like yeah i'm pissed off about that haitian situation we're like dude did like really you know and then like i showed him the uh, the the other camera angle from behind hmm I'm like, dude, he's not whipping this dude. He's grabbing him by the shirt. But it was photoshopped. No, no, I, no, no, no. I and that's what I people mean, yeah. end up I saying. I mean, they say oh, it's oh, photoshopped, or it's, you know, like haters will say it's fake. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 and I'm not calling anybody out, but when you when you when you when you talk to somebody who's so blatantly bathe. Bathing, not necessarily drinking the Kool-Aid, but they're bathing in it. Yeah, it becomes ingrained into their mental process. And that's another thing: people aren't thinking for themselves. They're not. They're being given an opinion by the mass media and social media, and they go with it. It's like, okay, why do you think this? Well, because I was, I heard it here. Okay, did you verify it? Have you done your homework? Have you gone to multiple sources? Because, God forbid, we have an independent, original thought in this country. And I, you know, I blame Hollywood for a portion of this because the lack of creativity coming out of that town nowadays. I mean, that it, this is true. With the insurmountable amount of re reboots and remakes, uh, you know. And and just because we're nerds, I'm I'm, I'm looking at the Force Awakens, <laughs> you know, like Star Killer One, Star you know Star Killer Base One or something like that, Star Killer Base, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, we're just gonna make the Death Star an actual planet. Okay, sure. You know. <laughs> I, was, I was like watching that movie. I was like, this is Oddly. pretty much the same movie yeah, from the is, 70s. Yeah, this is this is the this just is the new newer hope people with extra steps. Yeah. You know, but. <clears throat> I mean, it, if people were to sit there and actually take the time, I know, before you even go there, people taking the time to think for themselves perish the thought, right? Or do their own research themselves. Yeah. I was like, uh, I was... You, know, you want like people to, you know, respect your opinions. You want them to let you have your day. You well, know, it's your like... 15 minutes. But earn it. Yeah, it's just like that whole uh, thing of telling a person verbatim what the actual law is, like like the whole uh, uh, voter ID and uh, Georgia and everything. Oh, that's was racist. To, like, well, I read racist. the I, I read the article. The, I was like looking at articles as like racism, racism, racism. Let's just pull up the actual law, and I pull up the actual law, and I said verbatim. He was like, "Well, what about this?" It was like, "Well, it says here you could do this way." If you need to, you can still mail it in and everything like that. They just have to match it up with your signature. Yeah. It's like, well, what about this way? I was like, well, they have it right here. It's you. It's like, we'll just have to agree to disagree. I was like, what's giving you fucking facts, bro? Like, and you know, and and okay, and this is going to be a hot topic here. The heartbeat law that we've got now here in Texas. Yeah. That protects babies after five weeks. Yeah. All these feminists and activists and and and, and uh, Facebook legal experts. 
And by feminist, I watch Dave Chappelle. It's just a human that agrees with women's rights. Or it's the beta male who took women's study, women's studies in college because he was trying to get laid, thinking, "Okay, this is going to be my way in." No, dude, you just bought yourself a one-way ticket to the friend zone. Yeah. Um, anyway, so you get a lot of these activists and these leftists and these these mindless sheep, and and you know they're just like, "Oh, it's my body, my decision." Blah 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 blah. It's not murder. Well, for starters, it's. Yes, the baby is growing inside your body, but you're killing another person. You know, a person that doesn't start until birth. I'm like, well, what about conception? So you're going to say, you know, where's that line? But they're getting all bent out of shape, and they're like, well, men can't tell me what to do. Well, had you taken the time to do your research, that law, that bill was written, wait for it, by a woman. I mean, come on! It was yeah, but she was she was she was mind wiped by uh, uh, a man. She was mansplaining the whole entire thing when she was writing it down. That's what happened. Oh yeah, yeah we'll just we'll, we'll just say that. Yeah, oh, she was mansplaining it, so she she was just a puppet. Like she doesn't count. We don't want her as a you know she's not considered a woman. Like oh wait, hold on. So biologically, she has a vagina, she has a uterus, she has fallopian tubes, she has a vulva, and she identifies got, as a woman. And she identifies as a woman. So by the letter of the law and by the letter of science, she is playing the playing the playing the game by the rules that you set out. So she is a woman, both mentally, emotionally, physically, biologically. She meets all the criteria. Check, 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 check. She's a woman. She wrote this bill. She introduced that bill. And now all of a sudden, they forget about that because it's a convenient thing because they throw out that straw man and they in just, this direction. And they just go uh, up and it was like, well, Abbott signed it. And I was like, oh. You see those flags usually... and those T-shirts? So like, you know, it's uh, because they had, they had a, a, a protest down in Dallas. I think it was like a week or two ago. And you see these flags, these T-shirts, you know. It's a it's a uterus. It's like the whole reproductive thing, right? Fallopian tubes, ovaries, and everything like that. Yeah. And it says, "Come and take it." Like, are we talking about forcibly like handing out hysterectomies? I mean, it, I'm sorry. Where was that argument? And, and you know, and I love, I absolutely, absolutely love this one. It goes back to an old meme, but you saw these these saw these signs and 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 things like that at these protests. I wish as a woman that I had the same rights as a gun. What? So you want to be owned and you want to be so regulated that the only way that you can be openly obtained is through illegal means? Yeah. I and mean, what about all these women's rights activists and you know, all these empowered women that are like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm sexually liberated and I'm going to sleep with everybody. Well, we have a word for people like you, just like we have a, peop a word for people like that on the male side of the gender. But so by the same logic that you want to be as free and have all the same types of rights as a gun, are you telling us that we can now put you into a world where we can limit the number of clips that get inserted into you <laughs> and it's magazine <laughs> but yeah I, I get your point oh, i know i know <laughs> i know and i, I hey. that was a full pot bad johnny i know better but so, you know and how big of a magazine can be put inside of you uh, that that is a better question you how know? many how many rounds can you uh uh how many rounds can you carry at one time, time. Yeah, how, how many rounds can go through your chamber at one time? You yeah. know, uh, how rapidly can those rounds be expended? How many how many rounds can go through your barrel? You know, a, a, within which a certain barrel time can you use? Yeah, how long of the barrel? Yeah, you know, are, are we talking about the long barrel? Are we talking about the uh, the short barrel? Or are we talking about the the, sh the sawed off one that usually has a silencer wrapped around it? Yeah, you know, I mean, come on, I mean, it just these. Arguments, these these counterpoints, none of them are original. None of them, none of them are based in facts, at all. Period. You know, like, well, life doesn't start until a person is born, and it's only a clump of cells. But yet, we're looking at other planets. We're looking at things off-world. 
Yeah, most and of even, the time, and they're, even, they're, and even places here on Earth, when when a scientists are looking at things, the guarantee of life is is the, most of the time it's bacterial. Yeah, it's like oh, you're looking at a clump of cells, and that's considered life here, but not here. Yeah. So, which is it? What are you going to have? You going to have your cake, or are you going to eat it too? You know, I mean, you can't have one and then deny the other. And something, the one thing that nobody is talking about, I mean, absolutely nobody, is the the men's rights there. Yeah. You know, it's up to a woman. A woman can make that decision on her own, whether or not she wants to abort that child. But the man does not have a say. Well, the man got her pregnant. Well, I mean, the last time I checked... It takes two, two, the tango. Yeah, it takes two. You allowed him inside of you. You allowed him to, and, the, and this was brought up to my attention the other day, or last week. There's a bill being introduced um, by a Democrat, of all things, that men are no longer going to be considered men. They're called inseminators. And women are no longer women. They are birth people. And a man must be the bill is proposing that a man must be, uh, he must undergo a vasectomy after the birth of his third child. And now, if, if that bill were to pass and become law kind of a thing, they are incentivizing your friends, neighbors, you know, whatever. If, if you have not received a vasectomy after your third child is born and you are reported, the person that reported you can receive up to a $10,000 reward. Jesus. That's how, ridiculous. How insane is that? You know, and it's like, look, if I'm fine with, you know, you wanting to use birth control, great, awesome. I've got a, I've had a vasectomy. You know, so it's like, I, I don't really care if that law became law. Go ahead and report me, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn around and and once 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 it's been proven, I'm like, I I can just picture this. The police come to your door. Put your hands behind your back. What's the charge? Not receiving your vasectomy by your third, you know, uh, after you know, after your third child was born. Oh, well, I can go ahead and dispel that rumor right now. I'll pull out my ball bag and show them the stitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I, I could just see you like drop trout and everything like that. I mean, it's like greeting the door when the Jehovah's Witness comes up to talk to you, you know, while you're trying to watch football on Sunday. It's like. Yeah. It's like you answer the door in a wife beater, a pair of boxer shorts, and a cigarette in one hand, a beer in the other. You know, it's like, yeah, we'll talk about Jesus Christ. You come on inside. Well, no, we're, we're okay. You know, but, you know, I mean, you just, I mean, can you imagine that? And then what? <laughs> the police officer takes offense because what if it's a female officer? And you pull your ball, your ball bag out. Now, now you're gonna. Now you're looking at an indecent, you know, an indecent exposure charge. Well, it's probably gonna be the whole whole thing to where, uh, just like uh, when a f there's a female uh, a criminal, a, f a female has to be present for the search. Oh yeah, I mean, <clears throat> but I'm just, you know, and and now I'm just trying to be a smart ass. But I mean, it's vice versa with uh, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, and I know kid. that. I know that, but. You, I'm, I'm just. I'm, I wonder if you can get the number too. I was like, I, I, I have a vasectomy. Shit. <laughs> wink, wink. Right. You know. You. I mean. I still. I still like. This is. This is so fucking hilarious. I had a, a coworker that I worked with tw uh, twice. Uh, he, we worked in ABB and we worked up at uh, Helmet. And uh, what was funny about it is. I asked him just recently when we were hanging out. I was like, "Hey, is is your is your kid still? You, did you just totally disown your kid?" And he's like, "Yeah, dude. How? Because what he did was is uh, the woman cheated on him, and he told her he's like, "Hey, I had a vasectomy. There's no way that could be my kid." Right. Exactly. And he wasn't vaccin uh, uh, vaccinated. Or not vaccinated, but uh, had a uh, bisectomy. Yeah, it. I mean, the one over overwhelming thought that went through my head when I when I read that, it's like, wow, well, you know, because China's got that 
one child or two child law, you know? Yeah. And, but, oh, well, that's, that's population reassignment. We're like, well, no, you're still taking people's kids and you're punishing that family, you're taking that kid and go giving it to somebody else. You're forcing the destruction of, of the family unit there and you're punishing people for having kids. It's like, all right, well, you know, because China is a, it's a country of a couple of billion people. And that's our problem how. You know? Well, that's that's one thing that a lot of people like to do is they go out of their way to basically, oh, look at well, over here. They're doing it right. Maybe we could try it. And we try it, and it just pummels to the ground. And it's like, why did it work over there? Because it's a different culture. If it's a different area of the world, and they have probably have to, I mean, yeah, because like, okay, so for example, the population control issue or policies over in China, it's like, well, if you don't, at you know, if you don't conform or comply, you disappear. Yeah, you you go to a work camp somewhere well, it, it's and you like, never get found. It's it's like over saying here, that it, those people have never known what it means to be actually free. Yeah, I mean, if for example, China has instituted a gaming curfew, like Monday through Friday, kids are, can only play like an hour a day or some shit like that and the ips in china and the gaming companies that control those servers are they're, they're just gonna getting all together getting all lockstep and saying you know zick hell you know like really is that what it's come down to well it's basically the the, the uh, fact of saying okay Clubbing seals is okay. You can do it any time. And our country believes this. This is just, you know, uh, thinking out loud and uh, opinion. But you can do it any time. But it's all right in this country to do that. But, you know, what if you go to the zoo and, you know, like, you know what? Fuck that seal. And you go out and you just club the seal in front of your families and everything like that. Hey, it's my legal right to do that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean it, it sounds ridiculous. Take, yeah, we all have to fill our role in the in the in the overall ecosystem of the world, which is why hunting works. One, it puts food on the table. Two, well, I'm not saying in for the honey aspect. Oh, I'm I saying know. for the aspect of. But what about the Inuits, the Eskimos? Yeah, you know, they live on seal fat. They live on seal meat. You're going to take away their food source. What are you going to do? You're going to you're going to westernize them. Are you, are you going to force them down into the lower latitudes? And You know, I mean, why? Yeah. So, it, so that way you can make them conform to your way of life? You're forcing your way of life, your thoughts, and your beliefs on another culture? You know what that's called? Wait for it. It's called fascism. You know, as a conservative, I don't care what your opinion is. I don't care. You, you can believe whatever you want to believe. You can believe that the sky is red. You can believe that there is a God. You can believe there's not a God. I'm not going to look down on you because of that. As a, as a, as a God-fearing man, I will say, you know, I'm going to pray for your salvation. I'm going to pray that, that, that God opens up your heart one day or that you open your heart to God and, and, and you recognize that he does, in fact, exist. But I'm not going to sit there and force my beliefs on you. I'm not going to sit there and be like, well, you have this opinion, it's different than mine, I'm going to come over there and beat the crap out of you until you believe the way that I believe. Because throughout the course of human history, and most recently in the 30s and 40s, we had a group of people that did that, and they were called Nazis. The Night of the Long Knives. The not Hitler, Hitler's brown shirts went out and basically ran amok and just made life fucking miserable for Jews everywhere. Or what happened with Stalin. Yeah. I mean... They wanted to get socialism and everything. A lot of farmers ended up dying because they wanted the property, and then they found out that, hey, we need this food source. So that happened. But you also got to look at the fact of the forefathers, uh, fathers, fathers, the forefathers, the forefathers, they had the insight of actually... Uh, <coughs> saying, hey, different parts of the country is going to end up acting differently. Yeah. So, it, it, or, or this is going to pertain here, so 
we'll just let the states uh, govern themselves because they know what's uh, what's going to be best for their state or their area. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and I, uh, I'm, I'm the firm belief that this country needs to experience a new awakening. And I'm not talking about being woke. There is a difference between a, uh, an awakening and being woke. Being woke is just an ignorant thing. I mean, it's just an ignorant word. You woke up, but you're not woke. I mean, really? I mean, that, that's, that's like these well, you're ignorant... Not, you're not woke enough. It's like these wow. ignorant-ass college students. like that guy that quit on his team for Ohio State yeah. in the middle of the game. He tweeted out, good luck to my teammates, and he spelt luck L-U-C-C. Like, dude, you graduated high school. You are in a college university. And you're trying to tell me that it takes more effort to reach over and hit the C twice than it does for your other thumb to go over there and hit the fucking K button? Spell that shit right. Or, at the very least, voice to text. Yeah. Unless you're a mumbler in Siri or, you know, whatever your Android's called. Can't fucking understand you. You know? It's called Android. Just, yeah. just putting it out there. Well, it's... Fisher Price phones. That's all. I mean, <laughs> it's the 21st fucking century. Get over yourself. Become an adult. Just go out. And get a phone that works. Anyway, part of the sheep of the apples. It's whatever. It's called connectability, people. God. Oh, but it's an open root system, and I like what I like. Okay, fine. You want to bring that argument up? Okay, fine. I will allow you to bask in your ignorance, and then whenever I, you and I are trying to hold a conversation, like for at work, for example, and yes, if our boss ever listens to this, he's going to be like, what in the actual? And I, we'll hear about it. But you know what? I'll invite that debate because I'll be like, I said what I said. Change my mind. You know? Um, like, if we're out on the job site and we need his guidance in real time, I don't want to have to use Facebook Messenger. Everybody else, with the exception of one other person, not going to mention any names, but his initials start with an M, have iPhones. Right? Yeah. Even our head salesperson has converted. He has an iPhone now. Right? <laughs> our boss? Android. Right? FaceTime would be amazing to have. Everybody else has got Apple. Get an Apple. iPhones. Have FaceTime. It's great. Awesome. Yes, I know Android's got an app for that. But it's built in. You know? And we can get real-time conversations, real-time guidance on something that may be a little bit outside of our skill set. You know? Well, it's also the point to where even if we don't pay our phone bill, if, as long as we have Wi-Fi, we can still talk to each other. Yeah, you know, but as I long can as still call you. but as long as our boss is being fiscally responsible and paying all the bills. <laughs> I looked at the camera, breaking that fourth wall, like I'm looking at you. Yes, our boss pays the bills. He pays our payroll. Yeah, so I mean, he's he's taking care of what needs to be taken care of. Anyhow. Moving on. It's like a White House tour. We're walking. We're walking. And yeah. We're stopping. Um, you know, yeah, we've got that capability. It's called technology. It's called the progression of things. It's like, don't be so set in your ways to where you you just refuse to budge and it becomes a fault. But on the flip side of it. Or you can't come up with a new idea. Yeah. And it actually works out. And you, right. Or you just shun it. Like, uh, oh, what was that? damn thing dark ages <laughs> right yeah where science was bad but the church was still good <laughs> science is bad church is good but yeah you know it's like or being a biology teacher and being a create uh being creationist. a creationist yes i believe in creationism but i also believe in evolution to a degree yeah i know i'm kind of like that anomaly you know i brought that up with my girlfriend and she was like oh well you you, you think that we came from apes? And I'm like, I don't necessarily think that we came from apes. We share a lot of the same DNA. But does that mean that JoJo the circus chimp over here is going to evolve and we're going to have like a planet of the apes uprising? I, not necessarily. I'm hoping for it. 
Yeah, sure. Bring it on. Caesar the ape. Yeah, I'll put you in my crosshairs. I'll be a Huckleberry. Let's go. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's like, I believe in UFOs. I believe that there are, there are, and there's intelligent life in this universe, in this galaxy. I think it just bypasses it every once in a while. I believe that there are other intelligent species out there that do not look like us. Because I think it's an inherently, I think it is inherently arrogant of us to think that we, as a species, that are not only a the only life in, in the uni- in the in the universe. Dude, I've watched the Star Wars gal- uh Star Wars uh, documentary. I know there's other races. <laughs> Stupid. Well, <laughs> fair. <laughs> but well, if you're gonna bring up Star Wars, that did happen a long time ago. Anyways, moving on. Evolution. Evolution, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, but to think that we as a species are the only thing out here and that we are what God looks like. Yes, I understand in the Bible it says that God created us in his own image. But God is supposed to be all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipresent, you know, omnipotent, right? And I know your brain's going, I said omnipotent, not impotent. God. It's sad that I know this. I don't even have to say it. No, what I was thinking is like, what if when God created us, he was really high? Yeah, I don't want to get struck with lightning right now, nor ever. So I'm going to move away from that. <laughs> he said it, not me. Wait till he gets outside. Um, but to think that we are what God looks like, like we are the end-all, be-all form of God. God can take on whatever form he wants. You know, so he may have created us in his own image and said, this is what I want you to look like. You know, he create another species this is what i want you to look like you know i mean god can do anything that god wants to do he can move mountains he can he can use situations that would not necessarily you would think that would be part of his will part of his plan he allows things to happen to us like seasons you know bad seasons good seasons in our lives you know you know strife and turmoil versus victory and, and and you know feast right Everything is used is done for his will. I mean, it's done according to his plan, and, and, and it helps to, I mean, he uses those different situations to help, you know, uh, exemplify his glory and his power, right? But we're, we're, we're not what God looks like. I mean, we may be a form of what God looks like, but, you know, so, I mean, you talk about the grays and, you know, as far as aliens are concerned, you know, with the big heads and the almond-shaped eyes and stuff like that. You know, I'm not saying that those people are wrong. That may be what they saw. That may be what's visiting us. Well, it's one of those things is uh, if something's constant, then yeah. it, it's probably and, and I firmly believe that the Earth is more than 6,000 years old. You know, I mean, I believe that the Earth is millions of years old. I mean, because, yes, while it says in, in creation, the creation story in, in, in Genesis, that God created the Earth in six days, right? Yeah, but six days to him. Six days to him, exactly. Six days to him may be, like a day for him, maybe like a million years, yeah. you know? And we're always talking about things happen in God's time. Things happen according to God's plan, his timing, his time, you know, this, that, and the other. And, I mean, we've even had to create a new measurement of time when we're talking about the Big Bang Theory, right? Because it's talking about Planck time. Because they were trying to, scientists were trying to figure out a way to explain how the expansion of the universe at the initial creation, right? Everything expanded out. And they figured that it expanded out faster than the speed of light. Well, if Einstein is in fact correct and you cannot travel faster than the speed of light, then they had to come up with a new measurement of time called Planck time. So it breaks down seconds further than nanoseconds. Well, the whole concept of time is only a human concept, though. Yes, it's a construct. Yes, I understand that. But, you know, so as it relates to, you know, the, the overall, I mean, getting back to, and this was a big end around here, but as it as it relates to, you know, what we recognize as life versus what some political groups and, and some some. Yeah, it's opinion, this is the opinion of one person compared to the opinion of another. Yeah. 
Yeah. What, you, what is that line? The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one, but for the few. Yeah. You know, so if if you feel like you need to go out and abort that child, do I think that you should have access to that? Yes, but there needs to be qualifiers for it. Using abortion as a means of contraception? Absolutely not. And, you know, and they want to talk about, well, you know, they're taking away women's, you know, uh, choice to, to choose or ability to choose. But no. Just up to five weeks, you have that ability to go out and actually get a, a physical abortion. They also have the plan B. That's widely available. You don't even need a prescription for that anymore. Yeah. So it's... It, they're just looking at this as, oh, well, the government's trying to legislate my ability to kill, you know, uh, and let's, let's, let me stop there because using abrasive words and terminology like kill, abort, taking away a woman's ability to terminate a pregnancy after the, after the five-week mark is not legislating what they can and cannot do with their body. It is about the preservation of life, pure, plain, and simple. Because, you know, do I agree with the law? Yeah, I'm glad that they passed it. I absolutely am. Does that make me a misogynist? Does it make me a pig? In some eyes, of, in, in the eyes of some people? Yeah, it does. But the biggest, the, one of the biggest, uh, the, one of the biggest uh, losers in that heartbeat law is Planned Parenthood. Because they... They, they thrive. I mean, it's a billion dollar a year business for them. Not only in the cost of the abortion, for especially late term abortions, but when they, they, when that, when that fetus is delivered after the abortion is completed, Planned Parenthood harvests the organs and stem cells from those aborted fetuses, and they sell them to medical medical companies. I still need to do research on that and find out. It's a, it's a, it's it's like a billion. It's a, it's close to a billion dollars a year that that Planned Parenthood makes. I thought that. it was just billion dollars only because of the uh, government giving them. Uh, grants. Oh well, yeah, no, no, no. That, that's in addition to the subsidies that we give them as a government, as 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 you know, for, as an as America. I mean, I personally, I think we need to defund them because if we're always talking about how we're broke and the government needs to pass a balanced budget, well, how about one? We stop giving company or money to all these foreign governments that hate us, like Pakistan. They fucking they, Pakistan can't stand us. Why are we giving them money? Why are we giving Iran money? Why do we still give a shit about what the hell goes on in Iraq? I mean. We've handed that country back over to them prematurely, but we handed it back over to them. Why are we giving them money still? Why are we propping up their their government? Why are we propping up their currency? Why are we giving money to Europe? You know, uh, why are we giving money to uh, Middle Eastern countries at all? I mean, if we if we give money to any one government, it should be the Israelis. Because there are partners in that in that region, they align themselves with us. Our our interests are of the same, at least depending on the administration that's sitting in the White House. Yeah, because even right now, uh, United Kingdom won't do anything with the United States. Absolutely not, and it's because of our president. Yeah, quote unquote. You know, but and I say quote unquote because I re absolutely refuse to acknowledge Sleepy Joe as a legitimate president. Well, he, he got certified. Let's not go down that road because I can be. We can be here all day, and you know, to be honest, I've got some errands to run, and we've got you've got ep episodes to edit, and I got the other things to do with my dad. So yeah, well, that too. I, I got to run around too. Yeah. So, but on that note, um, God, you know, we we could just we could absolutely go all day. This would be like a good thing that we could do like a live, like a YouTube live, and then have people. Screaming at us, screaming at us, and giving comments, and we could be like, "All right, fine. You, you want to be an adult? We could probably do a Facebook Live on this." Yeah, we. Yeah, you know what? We probably could. But all that aside, um, I've got, I, I've got I, to get my MacBook over to Best Buy so that way they can yeah. work my keyboard. But um, man, I, 
I, this is a good talk. This is a good talk, yeah. So, um, this is one of those uh, good talking episodes. We didn't really have a, a big subject other than the a little yeah. bit of news that we got um, this week. Programming note, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. I think we should probably wait until Tuesday to do the sports episode for next week. Um, one, because... All the games are going to be done? No, no. But um, I've got I've got a commitment Monday night that I have to get to, provided work cooperates and we can get back on time. Um because I've got a, I've got an officers meeting for my American Legion post on Monday night at six, because um, they're discussing things among other things of like we're more than likely within the next year going to be losing our commander because he's going to probably be moving back to West Virginia. Mm. Um, I'm going to be relocating to Houston at least at some point in the next year. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, so they're they're just kind of looking. They're they're trying to spitball things to get a better picture as to how they can proactively plan to keep the post viable and solvent and, you know so that way we're not vacating slots in the you know in the cabinet so to speak and leaving everybody kind of high and dry you know because i mean you know what happens when you leave privates and lower enlisted and charged without no direction it's fucking anarchy right no you know we can't have that but um there might be a geneva article on that one too oddly enough no <laughs> That's why we have the, that's why we have things like the E4 mafia. Oh yeah. Yeah, so but um yeah, so I think we should probably wait until Tuesday to shoot next week's sports episode. And I think for I want to think cuz I know like on November 1st, it's a Monday. So as soon as I get off of work, bam, I'm in the car and I'm heading to Houston. Um I would just put a couple of episodes in there. I think we should I you know what that Sunday, um, October 31st. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's Halloween night, too. Should probably... Saturday. Yeah, we can we can do... We, we can pre-record our sports episode, and then you can just release it Monday night. But, um, I'll... Yeah, we'll, we'll spit all, spitball all of that out. Yeah. It was just... It was at the front of my mind, so I just wanted to get it out before I forgot about it. They're all knowing now. But anyways, this is What the Hell episode. I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. And thank you for watching. Let's go, Brandon.